Hello, welcome to this lesson. In this video, we are going to learn how to find the particular solution to this differential equation given that y is equal to 3 when x is equal to 1. So we have the question to be x dy dx dy dx plus y squared equals 1. Okay. So let's look at how we are going to solve this. So the first thing I'll do is to bring the y squared to the right hand side. Okay, so when I do this, we're going to have x, we're going to have x dy dx to be equal to 1 minus y squared. Okay, so our main aim here is to group all the terms with x on one side and then all the terms with y on one side, okay, and also separate the differential coefficients, which, in, which means I want to separate the dy from the dx. So let's look at how we are going to do this. So for this to be easy for us, I'm going to reverse this differential equation, okay. I'm going to write it in inverse form. So when I do this, we're going to have the x to be 1 over x, okay, and then the dy, the x will be. 1 over dy dx, okay, and then this will be equal to this will be equal to 1 over 1 minus y squared. Okay, I have written it in inverse form. So that's what you are going to do next 1 over dy dx, okay, is the same as dx dy okay let's take note of this so i'm going to do a substitution here so when I do that you're going to have one over x dx dy okay and then this will be equal to one over one minus y squared so from here what i'll do is that i will multiply both sides by dy okay so that I can get rid of the dy on the left hand side and then get a dy on the right hand side. So when I do this, you're going to have 1 over x dx. Okay, and this will be equal to 1 over 1 minus y squared dy. This mm -hmm. is what you're going to get after multiplying through by dy. Mm -hmm. So from here, we can bring the integral symbol. Okay, so you're going to have the integral of 1 over x, x, okay, to be equal to the integral of 1 over 1 minus y squared with respect to y. Okay, looking at the term on the left hand side, we can integrate easy, okay, but looking at the term on the right hand side, it will be difficult for us to integrate. So for this reason, we are going to apply partial function. Let's look at what you are going to do. So for us to be able to apply the partial fractions, you have to be able to write the fraction here, this fraction in, in a different form, okay, by splitting it into two parts. So let's look at how you are going to do this. So we have the fraction to be 1 over 1 over y minus y squared okay i can rewrite this as i can rewrite this as one over one over one plus y multiplying one minus y using difference of two squares okay so you're going to apply this to get the two parts of the partial fraction so let's look at what you're going to do so you're going to have 1 over 1, 1 plus y, okay, multiplying 1 minus y, okay, and then this will be equivalent to a certain number a over y plus 1 plus y, okay, plus another number that you don't know yet, b over 1 minus y. Okay, so this will be our partial fraction. So what this means is that 
if you're able to find the value of a and b then the term on the left hand side will equal to the term on the right hand side so our main goal here is to find a and b so let's look at that so we're going to have one over one plus y multiplying one minus y this should be equivalent to just like we do to addition of normal fractions we are going to multiply the two denominators okay so you're going to have one plus y multiplying one minus y okay when i do this then we are going to do cross multiplication then so you're going to have a multiplying one minus y plus b multiplying one plus y okay so from here you see that the, the denominator values are the same for both sides okay so we can leave it and focus on the numerators so for the numerators we have one to be equivalent to a multiplying one minus y plus b multiplying one plus y okay so our goal here is to find a and b okay so just like we're doing partial fractions we are going to find a value for y okay that we can put there so that we can eliminate either a or b first to find the other so what i want to do now is that i want to find b okay i'll choose to find any of them first i want to find b first so what i'll do is that i will set y to be equal to one okay when i do this you're going to have one to be equal to a multiplying one minus one because we said y should be equal to one plus b multiplying one plus one okay when i do this i'm going to have one to be equal to a multiplying zero and then that will be zero plus b multiplying two that will be two b when you do this you're going to get b to be equal to one over two same way same way we are going to set y to minus one okay when we do this we are going to get the a to be one over two just like the b so we can substitute a and b in terms of this a and b that we have here okay when we do this we are going to have one over one plus y multiplying one minus y okay to be equal to one over two okay one over two multiplying one plus y plus one over two multiplying one minus y so you see that we have split the fraction into two parts so that we can perform the integration easily so let's go ahead and do the integration okay so from where we start i mean this point we are going to continue from there okay so you are going to have the integral of 1 over x with respect to x okay to be equal to the integral of the integral of 1 over 2 1 over 2 multiplying 1 plus y okay plus 1 over 2 multiplying 1 minus y with respect to y okay so this is how you are going to do this integration okay so for the term on the left hand side when we integrate it you are going to have then of x okay and then i'll bring the constant of integration okay so now let's look at the integral of the term on the right hand side so for the term on the right hand side because we have one over two there okay which is just like a normal constant we can send to the left hand side of the integral symbol so and that you're going to have one over two and our final line of one over one plus y and then that give us line of one plus y okay now do the same for the second value also that's the second thing so for that one too because you have a negative here okay when you integrate you know that you have to divide by the, the, the derivative of the value in the bracket and we have minus y there and the derivative of minus y will be minus one okay 
and you are going to multiply this minus one minus one by the half okay and that is going to make the whole term negative so you're going to have minus one over two okay lean of one minus one okay this is what you are going to have okay what i'll do next is that instead of c i'm going to write c as lean of k okay which is also a constant so i'll put that in place of c just for us to be able to simplify further so we are going to have lean x okay plus lean k on the left hand side to be equal to on the right hand side you see that we have um one over two common to both terms okay and then um, we have two log expressions there okay which is the lean one plus y and then lean one minus one and then they are subtracting so we can apply a log property so when you do that that's first of all you are factoring out the half and then applying a log property so if you are subtracting two log functions from one another we can actually write it as a fraction so you are going to have lean of one plus y okay over one minus y okay this is what you are going to have okay and then for the left hand side too three log uh, terms are adding so you can write it in a different form and then that will be lean of kx okay you can multiply them or write it in this form since we are adding to be equal to one over two lean of one plus y over one minus y okay this is what you are going to have and then i'm going to use another log property for the term we have on the right hand side okay so when i do this i'm going to have ln of kx ln of kx to be equal to ln of one plus y by one minus y okay, to be equal to the power of half okay this is another log property that i'm applying here so from here you can see that we can cancel the the log uh, the log function which is the lean so and then you are going to have kx to be equal to one plus y over one minus y okay to the power half okay so what i'll do is that i will square both sides okay i'll square both sides so that, so that i can get rid of the half on the right hand side so when i do this you are going to get kx squared okay to be equal to one plus y over over one minus y okay this is what you are going to get okay but we actually want to get a particular solution okay we can take this as a general solution okay this is the general solution that we have now but we want to find a particular solution i'm saying this is a general solution because we have the constant k here so you can't take this as the particular solution because of the constant so we actually want to find the particular solution okay and because we are giving the boundary conditions we can substitute them into this general solution to find the particular solution so that's the next thing we are going to do okay so to find the particular solution i'm going to make use of the given boundary condition so we have the general solution to be k squared k squared x squared okay that will be equal to one plus y over one minus y okay let's put in the boundary condition so i'm going to have k squared multiplying x squared which is one so i'm going to have one squared to be equal to one plus y which is three over one minus three so when i simplify this i'm going to have k squared to be equal to or over minus two and that will be equal to minus two so i'm going to get k squared to be equal to minus two so when you come to this um the general solution that we got okay and come to the general solution that we got which i've already written this way okay this is the general solution okay so you see that the general solution you have k squared there and k is the only constant okay that means that even when we square it square, we are also going, we are still going to get a constant. Okay, so we now know the value of the square of the k, okay, which is equal to minus two, and that is a constant. 
So to get the particular solution, we have to write a minus two in place of the k squared there. Okay, and then when you do that, you no more have the constant in the in the solution. So that will be giving us the particular solution. Okay, so instead of writing k squared there, okay, instead of writing k squared there, we are going to use minus two. Okay, so that the k, which is the constant, will no more be there. Then we will have our our particular solution. We can't get we can't get k. Okay, we can't get k here because if you try to find k, you are going to get k to be equal to the square root of minus two. Okay, so for this reason, since we can write the general solution in this form, we can use k squared instead of really trying to find k actually. Okay, so since you have k squared there, we are going to have the particular solution to be minus two x squared. Okay, where the minus two represents k squared okay to be equal to one plus y over one minus y so this then becomes our particular solution since we don't have any constants in it thank you very much for watching this video and if you find this video very useful please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more updates